My name's Kelvin Day, I'm the manager of Pukyariki and I'm the project lead for the Curious Minds project around the Motunui panels. Hello, kia ora, my name's Glenn Skipper, I'm the Pautiaki Taonga, which is the curator for the Māori collection at Pukyariki. Uh, the project is based on two main questions that we get asked. Ever since we've had the Motunui panels on display in uh, August of 2015, people have asked how old are they and also were they carved by stone tools or metal tools? The first question is a bit more difficult to answer, but the second question uh, is the basis for this project that we're working on. I had two components in the project. Um, the first component was as the curator for the Māori collection, I, to do the research really around what taonga, um, what chisels, what adzes we have in the collection that are locally provenanced. And then the second part uh, was as a, a carver and artist myself to explore uh, the use of those chisels and, and answers. We decided to involve students from Manukarihi Intermediate uh, for a very good reason. Their school is situated not very far from where the panels were uh, discovered in 1971. So they've got an affinity with it. Oh, it's super important to, to have the kids there. The things that we're discovering, you know, at the moment are things that I'm hoping personally that we will pick up and start to use again in the future. And so these, these children, these, the, these tamariki, are really phase one, perhaps, of, of, of the next generation who, who might be picking up this kind of technology and, and re-bringing it back into our, you know, back into our community as, as, part of, as an everyday part of it. Yeah, so stage one, uh, when we had the children here, was really about identifying uh, the different types of file uh, of chisels and kind of getting to a description. Um, because none of the chisels from the collection were going to be used, that we wanted to recreate some pieces. So in order to do that, we needed to know how big they were, the types of shapes, and we, we found out basically by doing an examination that there were three basic types of different shapes and then there was a range of sizes amongst those shapes. Um, and we were able to take that information and supply that to Russell Beck, who then um, uh, mocked us up some blanks in those shapes of, of a rough size. Stage two was really, was also about uh, the introduction of um, steel uh, into you know, our, our ancestors' community. And, and so Dave was really uh, there to, to show the kids a, how, the, how steel was used um, before you know, we could go to the shop and just buy, buy stuff. Well, we went on a, a range of stuff today on uh, starting off with length of steel that uh, we're using and then forming that steel basically into a, uh, a fire poker. Back in the day, um, yes, you couldn't go down to, to Mitre Tan or, or, or Bunnings or the local hardware to, to buy all this sort of stuff. Back in the days, whether they were using uh, the panamu and, and, and stone chisels, they spotted these and thought, well, these are not going to wear out too much, we don't have to do too much to them. And, and then within the shape of these, it wasn't that hard to then put an edge on them. I think they could then work out, they could do uh, a better refined work in, in, in what they're doing in their, in their carvings. I, I gathered together some taonga that we could see working work marks on them, so, so we could still see ads marks, we could still see um, chisel marks, and sc or scrape marks, anyth anything basically. And we, scrut we were able to scrutinise the, the tools uh, onto, the, onto the taonga and to try and basically match up which one of these three tools might it have been. So we were just trying to really match up uh, what we now knew about the three different types of chisels and, and the areas that those might have been working into on, on a carving. Yeah, so, so we, had a, we had a piece of timber delivered to us. Well, we needed um, a piece of timber that was fresh. It needed to be wet, still wet, uh, unseasoned. We had it delivered to uh, Tāriri Are Marae, which is just on the outskirts of New Plymouth, and we um, proceeded to break it down into components uh, at the Marae. We used uh, wedges, basically, um, some mighty wedges and just just drove them in just just found that found that first split um, put them in and just kept adding wedges and just driving it through and it just the more we put in the more it just opened up and we wanted to use adzes uh, to at least shape a couple of the pieces 
uh, there was there was a there's a lot of technique involved, and and so it was it was great to have the opportunity to work on a piece for a purpose, so that we could work on our technique. Yeah, come day um, day one of the uh, the Saturday um, of the public kind of display, we started out um, you know we're setting everything up, uh, having a bit of a bit of a go. Yeah, and so then we started, uh, it wasn't long into that, uh, after about an hour, uh, that we had scheduled Russell to talk to the, to talk to the kids about Ponami. And then, and then Russell just started, and you know, just the information, the amount of information that he had was just awesome. The kids were just, were just, um, you know, we were really in the zone, everybody was, you know, it was just great. The reason why people chose Ponamu for tools was really because of its properties. And that is, it's the toughest known material on earth. Nephrite, or ponamon, is hard and tough. Just how tough that little cube of ponamon with a weight on it will take 50 tonnes to crush. In other words, eight tonnes per square centimetre. Now there's nothing else on earth that is as strong as that. So civilizations that had access to jade or nephrite had a distinct advantage over cultures that didn't because they could develop their tools to the correct angles for the optimum of cutting. So the students had to play detective. And I think that's really the really neat part of the project. They get to explore, to think, and to offer up uh, some possibilities, some explanations. You know, the project is called Curious Minds, and this project is very much about curiosity. I think curiosity is a great thing. So the students uh, were able to indulge in some curiosity. And who knows what uh, seeds have been sown for those students later on. I just hope that they're inspired to to be creative, and that they, you know, maybe also that they actually feel a little bit closer to these to these taonga, That there's some kind of connection, you know, uh, that's been sparked back there, some some reconnection. The investigation that our students have been involved in has helped to um, support their learning in the areas of science and social sciences, and uh, is a contextually rich uh, way for them to to be involved in a science investigation uh, that has um, a, a really good connection to our, our school as well. My name is Ruby Hutchison. I'm from Manukuri Intermediate School and I'm a Year 8 and I'm a part of the Curious Minds project. So I've definitely learned some new stuff off it. My favourite part so far has been about how they form the Pohonamu tools. I have gotten a better understanding of how they were made. My name is Phil Kroziatsiwaki, I'm a Year 7 student at Manukarihi and I think the highlight was the blacksmith because I don't really know how to get in there. My name is Jack Bala, I'm a student from Manukuri Intermediate, I'm a Year 8. I've been in the Curious Minds project and the special part I've found about it is that being able to actually use the different ponamu and the chisels and seeing how it all works in the depth and the different uses for that kind of material. Um, the special thing today that I found out about different chisels being used is you can just use like, for example, how they used an old spike from a ship, they can just turn it into like a chisel to make a carving for them. My name is Nia. Uh, the things I found really special are um, the carvings coming back from the swamp, like how they were and different carvers who done the carvings and what kind of trees they done the carvings on. Kia ora, my name is Ail Huffam and I'm a Year 8 student at Manukuri Intermediate, one of the school leaders. Um, my involvement with uh, Curious Minds Project, well it's been pretty fun so far, especially today with all the carving and everything. And it's also helped me understand how they've made and all the work gone into them. Um, my name is Maioha Hunt. 
and I'm a student at Manukori Intermediate, I'm year 7 and I am a member of the Curious Minds Project. Um, some things I enjoy learning and finding out is um, using the tools, which is one. Um, they're really fun and experimenting with them. Another one is learning the history behind them, so how we got them back here. Did we get the answers? Yes, yes and no. I mean, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that based upon the, the, the amount of work we were able to, to do, these tools um, could have achieved the, the overall shaping. Following the completion of the two-day experiment where the carvers worked on the, on the panels, or on the recreating of the, one of the panels, um, we got to a certain stage uh, in answering the question that we originally sent, but we ran out of time. So we're going to do some further work a little bit later on. We want to keep everything as close as possible to those times. Hence we use Totara. Uh, we've recreated Ponamu tools based on examples in the Pukyariki collection and we've got nails that are very similar to what was available to Māori in the late 1700s, early 1800s. So hopefully we can get very close to, to the answer, to answering our question really.